What's good, y'all? This your boy, Mr. Pound for Pound, and I am definitely in the house. And y'all already know, when I'm in the house, it's definitely going down. And you already know, it went down this past weekend. Miguel Cotto put it on Sergio Martinez. Oh, my goodness. Everybody that watched the fight was astounded, was shocked. Um, I'm just going to talk about the fight briefly. We're just going to go over it. Post fight comments. Mr. Pound for Pound. Let's get at it. All right. You already know where it was. Madison Square Garden. Miguel Cotto. Sergio Martinez. Cotto was 39 4, 32 knockouts. Martinez coming in the fight with 51 3 2, 28 knockouts. And it was a blistering fight from the get go. Martinez came out and, you know, he said he was cold. And honestly, to me, he just looked like he got caught. Um, You know, he was in his corner. He was bouncing around before the fight, you know, moving around, bouncing around, trying to show maybe the crowd and as well as himself that his knees were good and the legs were good and he was feeling fresh. Um, You know, Miguel Cotto in this fight knocked him down four times, three times in the first round. Um, The left hook, that check left hook that Miguel Cotto is really of Miguel Cotas is really what got everything going. Um, after that, it was just a brutal beating of Sergio the whole night. You know, um, in front of twenty one thousand fans at the Madison Square Garden, it was just it was it was an eventful night. It was history. You know, um, Cotto's now got titles at 140, 147, 154, and 160 and becomes the first Puerto Rican to win four titles in four different weight classes. Um, For me, that automatically gives him best Puerto Rican fighter all time um, because he's accomplished a feat that no other Puerto Rican fighter has done. I remember Felix Trinidad going up to middleweight to challenge Bernard Hopkins and uh, failed on his attempt. Um, You got to give Miguel Cotto top Puerto Rican fighter, if not the best Puerto Rican fighter all time, regardless of the four losses. Uh, You know, those four losses came to top quality opponents. Um, One of the losses came when the guy, Margarito, was possibly cheating. This was before he got caught with the hand wraps. So... uh, You know, there was speculation Pacquiao was on roids. I mean, so there's, there's... ways to go about if you want to really look at Cotto's record and break him down he, he could be 39 and 1 right now you know 39 and 2 really um, and if you go back you know he has fights to come he's going to build his record so a lot of people don't want you to look at his record and say oh what is Mr. Pound Pound talking about great you know best Puerto Rican fighter all time I'm not looking at the numbers 39 and 4 I'm looking at the accomplishments and what he's done and the fighters he's faced and uh, you know without a doubt what he did to Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez was considered before this fight up there with Floyd, up there with Manny. Actually, he was considered more dangerous because he was bigger and nobody wanted to fight him. Cotto put all that to rest. You know, Cotto's a guy coming off of losses to Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. So a lot of people were thinking, you know, maybe Sergio is, is probably going to bomb him out of there. He's probably going to box him. He's either going to box around him and knock him out or he's just going to bomb him out of there because he's a bigger guy. I, on the other hand, with my prediction, you guys can go back and watch it. My prediction was very accurate. I said exactly what happened in the fight. I said Cotto was going to come out. He was the harder hitter, better defense, better boxer. Um, the speed and everything like that, the speed and agility went to Martinez, but all the intangibles went to Cotto. And if you really are a fighter and you know about fighting, the style that Martinez has with the low hands, the dropping his hands to his, you know, his waist and throwing punches and boxing from there, that's cool. You can do that, especially if you can get away with it with fast reflexes. The thing is, though, is when you get older, you start having injuries. It's harder to get out of the way of punches, period, let alone get out of the way of punches with your hands down. Not only that, Miguel Cotto had the best game plan. He was throwing high left hooks. We call them check left hooks. When you come in, you check somebody with the left hook. It's called a check left hook. He was throwing that left hook consistently. And this could have been something that him and Freddie Roach worked on in camp. This could have been something that Miguel Cotto just had in his arsenal ready for Sergio because he knew to throw that punch. Um, Sergio moves and he has good movement. He's fast, but he moves very stiff. If you look at him, he has no head movement. He moves side to side quickly, but with his feet. He does. He's not a real guy that bobs and weaves, ducks under punches, and gets under. 
he kind of gets hit and he's stiff. I mean, we saw that with the Paul Williams fight. You know, he's kind of like a stiff board that take, he can take a punch. Um, this time around, though, with Cotto, Cotto was just so sharp. He displayed, you know, precision, power punching, as well as good jabs, good body work. Every time that Martinez tried to get in, he would just rip the body. That's exactly what you do. And I don't know if you guys have heard my 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 fights in the past of where I've explained on how you throw body shots and how you work fighters. Cotto did exactly prime what you want to do um, to Sergio Martinez. It was uh, it was excellent. It was just right on point. Um, nothing to be said bad about the performance. It was a great performance. Uh, you know, Cotto's only 33 years old. He has much left in the tank. People were talking about how, you know, he might be done this, that, and the other. Miguel Cotto himself was talking about how he only had three fights, maybe four fights left in him. Now the question is, wow, you know, after seeing that performance and the way he just brutally demolished Sergio Martinez throughout the whole fight, uh, what does Miguel really have left in